Hello, hello. Hey. <laughs> okay. For the record, state your name and pronouns and whatever identifier slash hyphenates you use. So I'm Cindy Tsai. I use she, her pronouns, and I am Chinese and Taiwanese American. I am currently in the theater industry. I just got my musical theater degree. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm freshly graduated from undergrad. Amazing. Okay, so for starters, I know you just touched on this earlier, but how do you define your race and ethnicity slash ethnicities? So I was born in the U.S., but both of my parents are immigrants, mm -hmm. and my mom is from Shanghai, China, and my dad is from Taipei, Taiwan. Interesting. So what does being Asian and Chinese Taiwanese mean to you? It's definitely tricky, the like Asian American experience. You know, it's hard to really identify where I belong and like. I don't necessarily feel like I belong in these countries like Taiwan or China, but I feel like I don't really belong here either because it's it's America and I feel like I'm seen as a foreigner. So it's hard um, to identify exactly what it means to me to be Chinese and Taiwanese. I think there are some cultural aspects that I have, like the way I grew up and like the language I speak and the foods I eat, but other than that, um, it's kind of a hybrid and also just like my own culture that I've curated from all, all of the above. So how would you say you identify with those things? Is it because you feel like you have to or do you actually feel like it or is it both, like you said, a hybrid? I think sometimes it can be hard um, to think tangibly what my culture is. I think the things we see are like language and food, cuisine, um, and like, like clothing, cultural customs, traditions, holidays. Um, and those are all part of my culture, but there are other like intangible things like the way that I was raised and the way that I act is inherently Taiwanese and Chinese, but it's not like something I can put my finger on. Like it's this thing that I do that is that culture and not American, or it's this thing that's American and not that culture. Um, so it can be hard to connect and really feel like I can own that I'm Chinese and Taiwanese. I always like, I feel like the disclaimer is always that I'm American or like I'm ABC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like American born Chinese, um, so, yeah, it can be tough for sure. I see. So, moving on to your career path, how do you envision or reimagine the arts and entertainment industry? I mean, we're in a reckoning right now. Over the past year, there's been a lot of talk about racial justice and equity, diversity, inclusion, all these buzzwords mm -hmm. um, about the entertainment industry. And I'm currently in theater, but I also want to get into film, TV, and music. And um, there are problems everywhere. So I envision, especially right now in theater, um, there is a reckoning. And a lot of people want to go back to work, but because our industry is closed right now, it's an opportunity to investigate and improve our the way our systems work and acknowledge that our systems are really corrupt and that they all <laughs> benefit white supremacy. Mm -hmm. So now's the time to really investigate that and like change how we run things so that when we go get back to when theaters open, that like artists are safe coming back. Artists of color, black artists, Asian artists, um, artists in the disabled community and trans artists, like everybody who is honestly very marginalized in this industry, um, that because this industry is dominated by like by white men, but like what industry isn't? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think now is the time to really dig deep into that. And so the vision is like, what is the vision for it? I don't even think I can imagine what it would look like, <laughs> like the ideal. Um, obviously seeing more people 
who look like the world on mm -hmm. stage because mm -hmm. the representation is so unbalanced like we just see a bunch of white stories and like the nuclear family mm -hmm. um and like that's not what our world looks like so i would start there for sure okay so then that center back on reality and something tangible you've mentioned all this reimagining that can't yet be imagined because we've never done it before what is your role in all of that and kind of relating to my original next question you co-founded zappy artists mm -hmm. so if you want to talk about that yeah so last summer um a friend of mine christine and i we were just talking and we wanted to produce like Asian productions um, and then we also were having a lot of conversations about allyship and um, specifically API allyship for black communities and um, we realized that we had a lot to say and we have a lot to learn as well so this was an opportunity for us to both learn and educate so we created this collective um, we're coming up on a year soon mm -hmm. and um, yeah and it's it's kind of like I'm, I'm never never really sure what to call it you know it's an organization a collective a production company like we we've done a production mm -hmm. that was very very successful we also fundraise and the majority the bulk of our work is um, in education and researching and then like just trying to help educate our audience um, and inform them a little better and to combat our ignorance. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So now let's get back to you. <laughs> we'll start with something simple. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about what matters to you. Obviously all of these, mm -hmm. but since you're working on so many different things and you have so many different feelings and emotions about everything what really matters to you in your work and how you keep yourself grounded in all this and i can mm -hmm. reiterate a question after mm -hmm. yeah i think the work that i am doing now and especially within the last year but honestly over the last few years that's very centered around race and representation and education now it's it can be really draining and it's, and like abolition and like right now is like a crucial time for organizing mm -hmm. in, in our industry and um it can be really draining so there always has to be a balance and there's so many things that i care about um that aren't this even though this may be like my main focus sometimes mm -hmm. but i also want to have a happy life mm -hmm. right and like spend time with loved ones and eat incredible food mm -hmm. and um you know make great art and witness incredible art um so what keeps me grounded i have these moments of just like you know i'm not going to give that part of myself away today um because like i said this work can be very exhausting very draining um it's very important to for me you know take the time to listen to of my favorite podcast that has nothing to do with mm -hmm. race you know or um cook my favorite meals that i grew up learning how to cook and watching a lot of anime, anime. <laughs> um yeah and i mean that also has a cultural aspect to it of like i my industry is so predominantly white um and so like my work and school and all these places that you know i i was taking up the majority of my time were predominantly white and that can be really draining so i made it um a conscious decision to like consume you know non-white <laughs> you know tv shows entertainment um and kind of immerse myself in 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 those cultures especially my own culture with like foods entertainment and all the things that i do in my free time um to kind of combat that predominantly white spaces that we're always in um and then it's just like my little safe haven you know like you can catch me <laughs> like making the nuclear noodles korean wow. nuclear noodles um and then like 
sitting at my desk and watching anime while I eat. Um, and that's like my form of staying grounded mm -hmm. and and like sustainable in all of this work is taking those moments, which can be hard to do sometimes, but it's really necessary. Mm -hmm. Which is my last question, and as you mentioned, this kind of work that you're doing overall is very important and like you said, it's hard to allow yourself to step away from it even for just a moment to just be. So what do you want to say to other people who are in similar positions who, you know, deserve a break, to deserve um, to celebrate themselves, but feel almost guilty in doing that? Well, I'll say I really relate to that. <laughs> if Not even guilty. There is guilt and also just like feeling that if I'm not gonna do it, who is gonna do mm -hmm. it, you know? So like, I have this responsibility, um, but that can be really unsustainable. And um, that's what I'm realizing. And I'm still young and I'm like learning a lot. Um, and I'm by no means an expert in any of this, like, or like activism. I'm even having a hard time calling myself an activist sometimes. I'm like, I like, I have an opinion on some things, you know? But um, I think for anyone who's dedicated to this work and is doing it pretty much every day, it's just taking those moments to breathe, to ground. Um, meditation is great, even if it's just for five minutes, mm -hmm. closing your eyes. Um, and then, yeah, finding those moments for me, it's, you know, it's a lot of Korean food, Taiwanese food, um, and anime and um and really great music you know like i love like making my playlists and stuff um and having little jam sessions like the, that's where i find my joy and that's where i feel like oh this doesn't necessarily have to be about me fighting for the greater good or you know equality or anything which is still really important but i would say to anybody who's in a similar position which I know you are too, Jay. Um, yeah, it's just taking those moments to to just for, for yourself, you know? That's why I said there are parts of me that I can't give away and I have to set that boundary. Um, and it's definitely something I'm working on and learning how to do, but I'm getting there every day. <laughs>